Um, it's interesting. Over the years, I've used my wildlife neighbors as, as central characters in stories or images. And, um, and in this particular image, um, I started with the idea of some of an, a creature, a nocturnal creature. And, um, and I always remember coming home at night and you'd see an opossum crossing the road and it was always in, intriguing, the sort of waddle, you know, and slow movement. Um, but having said all that, oftentimes it just sort of comes to you. It's, it's, that's the magical part, I think, of, of, of creating uh, images or creating almost anything is that oftentimes you don't, there's an interest of and a pull towards something where you're not sure what's prompting it. Now, after that happens um, with the opossum, I thought about um, when the idea of, of splitting the screen, um, the two images, an opossum hanging by its tail, um, and, and then later on, on top of a, of a branch, a limb. So, um, and it's interesting in this particular case, which really happens, it started out that way with an opossum, an opossum, and it and it just it grew from from there, and then the stars, and then the butterflies. Um, but I watched it grow, and also after I did the first initial thumbnail, I did a bunch of others, uh, similar but different ideas, uh, all using that sort of uh, kind of split screen. I just sort of felt right, and um, but that opossum. Uh, hanging by its tail, um, and then on the limb uh, was my first thumbnail. It rarely ever happens. Uh, and uh, what a delight when it does. Um, I met my uh, first professional artist. Uh, I grew up in a family that really, um, where there were no artists uh, or artists, visual artists in the neighborhood. And um, my family, uh, they were not really uh, museum goers. They didn't visit museums. That, however, they always provided us, uh, especially the boys, a, um, the simplest of materials. Uh, for instance, uh, um, we drew with pencils, which all kids, but we had plenty of pencils because my grandfather worked in a pencil factory right down the street from our home. Um, and um, at the age of 11, I, I took a uh, job, my first job selling newspapers at a very busy intersection on the corner of um, Germantown and Shelton Avenue in Philadelphia. And I would actually take a drawing pad and pencils with me, and I would draw people waiting uh, for the, the bus or the trolley. And I think I first started out by um, drawing the um, window displays. It was a very large department store. And they would change the window displays, and I would treat them almost as if it was a still life. And then I started drawing people um, who would stop to purchase a, to buy a newspaper. And, um, and it was interesting because um, at some point I would oftentimes just give the drawings away, uh, not thinking about the fact that that would always mean a return customer. And, um, and that happened. So I drew people waiting for the bus, the trolley, uh, buying a paper from me, um, quick sketches, of course, and then, of course, drawing, um, really um, spending much more time on much larger drawings of the uh, window displays turned out that one of the artists, um, one of the, uh, my customers was a professional artist. His name was John Liney. And he was the um, cartoonist on a syndicated uh, strip, comic strip, Henry at the time. And he took note of me drawing um, one day and he invited me up to his studio. Now, I want to return back to what I said earlier. No artist in the family or in a neighborhood. So now I'm meeting my first professional artist, and he invites me into his studio. And one day, um, before work, I did stop in to see Mr. Liney. You can imagine the kind of excitement um, uh, of, of being in an artist's studio. Um, I think that what really struck me more than anything else was the fact that I had no idea what a professional artist did. And here was Mr. Liney, who got up in the morning, and he went to work, 
doing the very same thing I'd love doing, drawing. And um, now that I'd leave there and say, well, if I worked hard enough or studied hard enough, I would become an artist like John Liney. I'm not sure it happened like the, uh, like just like that, but I am sure that that was that was when the seed of possibility was planted. You know, it was very interesting, um, and we're fortunate and blessed, the fact that um, we have a, a family full of, of creative um, uh, minds, and, and in, in different areas, um, photography, illustration, um, uh, and design, uh, and in writing. Um, and one of the things that is exciting about all of this is this opportunity that, uh, in many ways, we can share in the the other's success as well as the uh, times when it becomes more challenging. Um, I, we speak very often the same language, and um, so we know what each other's going through. And it's also that feeling of being part of something much larger than just myself. Uh, it's it's, it's a, f a family, and even the impact of, and you think about the number of books that um, um, have come out of the Pinkley, Pinkney family. Um, my wife, Gloria Jean, there's, there's Brian and Andrea Davis Pinkney and uh, Sandra and Miles. And uh, up to date, I've lost the count on the number of books. So that's pretty, pretty, pretty spectacular. The other piece that is important to remember, too, is that there are so other, when we get together and there are family members who are perhaps not in the creative uh, area, uh, that's a time where we come together and we speak about those other things that are, are valuable to uh, a family, uh, like the grandchildren and now a great-granddaughter. Uh, so all that comes into play, which means that the circle of conversation is quite, quite broad. Um, I was an adult when I learned that um, my challenges, uh, especially um, uh, in school and, um, and very, very early, um, came from a learning disability. I, I'm dyslexic. Uh, however, I didn't, I, I knew something wasn't quite right. Um, uh, and I learned as an adult that uh, this was a, a problem. Um, one of the things that has helped me through this this time was the one was I had the sense of family and I as a kid growing up um, uh, I was ever always supported and 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 through my mother and my father uh, there was this sense that that I could achieve um, even though they knew their son was struggling so I had support and I think perhaps uh, that allowed me um, um, to try to move forward with with this this disability with this challenge um, I don't know if I quite understood learning differences um, at that time, um, but I wanted to learn, and I knew that um, um, my process was a little slower than others. Now, I want to talk about something else that's very important, because I also understood that there was something about Jerry Pinkney that was uh, special, or that there was something there that my fellow students and friends couldn't do, and that was the ability to draw. So I leaned on that strength, and and I think my 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 self esteem and this sort of balance that every child needs was in check um, by the fact that there was something that I knew uh, I could do that maybe others could not do as well, and so my advice um, to young children, young adults, adults is to find that. Core, that that center, uh, where you feel that uh, you can express yourself 
even with that challenge, and uh, lean on it, uh, draw on it, uh, but use it to um, uh, to help uh, guide you uh, in, in 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 understanding that okay, there this is here, uh, but there's this other thing that's in place, and um, and but and and actually both make you whole.